Have you ever wondered what happens immediately after a plane crash? The moments following such an event are a whirlwind of activity, a race against time and tide to gather as much information as possible. This was the scene in the aftermath of the Kenya Airways Flight 431 crash. On that fateful day, the plane, an Airbus A310, had just taken off from Abidjan Ivory Coast when it plunged into the Atlantic Ocean, leaving a trail of debris scattered over a wide area. The Bureau of Inquiry and Analysis for Civil Aviation Safety, or BEA, France's Accident Investigation Authority, immediately swung into action, working in tandem with the Transportation Safety Board of Canada, the TSB, their main task, to locate and retrieve the flight recorders, more commonly known as black boxes. These devices hold crucial data about the flight's final moments and their recovery is a critical part of any aviation accident investigation. But finding them in the vast ocean amidst the wreckage of the aircraft was no easy feat. The crash site, a watery grave 50 meters deep, posed significant challenges for the recovery teams. The wreckage of the aircraft was spread over an area 150 meters wide and 450 meters long. The debris had been scattered in various directions by the strong underwater currents, making the task of locating the flight recorders even more difficult. The first breakthrough came on the 2nd of February when the team located the Flight Data Recorder, or FDR, amongst the wreckage. However, the Cockpit Voice Recorder, or CVR, remained elusive until the 24th of February, when it was finally recovered in the same area as the FDR. With the flight recorders now in their possession, the teams faced another hurdle extracting and analyzing the data within. The FDR unfortunately proved to be unusable, having recorded values unrelated to the flight. The CVR, however, held the last 30 minutes of the flight, a treasure trove of information for the investigators. Once the crash site was mapped, the search for the flight recorders began a crucial step in any aviation accident investigation. The flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder, often known as the black boxes, hold the key to understanding the events leading up to a crash. The search for these black boxes following the tragic crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431 was a meticulous and time-sensitive task. The flight data recorder, or FDR, was discovered by a recovery team on the 2nd of February, nestled amidst the wreckage at a depth of 50 meters. The FDR was swiftly dispatched to Ottawa and underwent a reading on the 24th of February. Simultaneously, the hunt for the cockpit voice recorder, or CVR, was in full swing. On the same day the FDR was read, the CVR was recovered from the same area. It was then sent to Canada for analysis. The CVR was able to provide a crucial 30-minute recording of the flight's final moments. However, the journey to uncovering the truth was far from smooth. The FDR, which should have held crucial information about the flight, presented a baffling complication. Instead of the expected flight data, the recorder had captured values unrelated to the flight. This anomaly rendered the FDR unusable for the investigation, a setback that no doubt challenged the resolve of the investigators. With the CVR as their only source of direct data from the flight, investigators managed to produce a transcript from the readout. This transcript, although limited in scope, offered invaluable insight into the last half hour of the ill-fated flight. It's worth noting that the search and recovery of these black boxes is a testament to the relentless pursuit of truth and understanding by aviation authorities. These devices, often the last pieces of a puzzle following a crash, can provide key insights into the final moments of a flight, helping to prevent future accidents and improve aviation safety. The investigation into the crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431 was no exception. Despite the unexpected complications and setbacks, the team pressed on unwavering in their commitment to uncover the truth behind the crash. Despite these setbacks, the investigation pressed on, determined to uncover the truth behind the crash. To fully understand an aviation accident, investigators must analyze not just the data from the flight recorders, but also the physical evidence left behind. With the black boxes recovered, the focus turned towards the crash site itself. From the 21st to the 24th of March, authorities meticulously mapped the crash site. The task was complex with the wreckage scattered over an area 150 meters wide and 450 meters long. 
The depth of the sea floor varied from 40 to 50 meters, adding another layer of difficulty. In April, an underwater mapping operation was conducted, revealing the extent to which the debris field had been affected by the strong underwater currents. The debris had spread in various directions, transforming the crash site into a vast underwater jigsaw puzzle. Among the scattered wreckage, key pieces were recovered. Half of the aircraft's main landing gear and the fin, for instance, were found on nearby beaches. These pieces, along with other debris, were integral to piecing together the final moments of Kenya Airways Flight 431. However, the underwater location of the crash site and the strong currents posed significant challenges. Despite these obstacles, the recovery and analysis of the debris provided valuable insights into the tragic event. They offered a glimpse into the sheer force of the impact and the subsequent dispersion of the aircraft parts. Yet even with the debris analysis, the puzzle was far from complete. One question remained, the activation of the stall warning. Given the lack of evidence pointing towards a true stall condition, investigators hypothesized that a false alarm was the most likely scenario. However, the exact cause remained elusive due to a lack of data. While the debris offered some clues, the mystery of the stall warning activation remained. One of the biggest questions in the investigation was why the stall warning had activated on Flight 431. In the world of aviation, several scenarios could trigger a stall warning. A few possibilities include an incorrect takeoff configuration, an incorrect speed indication, a loss of engine's thrust, an unexpected retraction of the slats, a shift in the aircraft's center of gravity, or an unanticipated deployment of the thrust reversers and spoilers. However, these possibilities were systematically ruled out in the case of Flight 431 due to a lack of supporting evidence. This left investigators grappling with the likelihood of a false alarm. Now, you might be wondering, what could cause a false alarm? Well, several factors could be at play. A faulty flight warning computer, or FWC, could erroneously activate the stall oral warning with or without the stick shaker. Alternatively, a damaged angle of attack sensor or an incorrect calculation of speed could also trigger a false stall warning. In the case of Flight 431, these potential sources of a false alarm were all considered. However, due to a lack of definitive data, investigators found themselves in a bit of a quandary, unable to pinpoint the exact source of the false alarm. Now, one must remember that a stall condition occurring during takeoff or climb is extremely rare. The training and recovery procedures for such an event are generally focused on the approach or en route phase of flight, not during takeoff or climb. This makes the situation all the more complex and puzzling. According to Airbus's Flight Crew Operation Manual, or FCROM, in the event of a stall warning, the flight crew should simultaneously apply full maximum engine thrust and reduce the aircraft's pitch attitude. The stick shaker should then cease and the pitch attitude should be maintained to allow the aircraft to gain speed while minimizing altitude loss. But if it was a false alarm, how could the flight crew have responded? The response to a stall warning is critical. But the flight crew are not commonly trained to handle such a situation during takeoff or climb phase. This is because the occurrence of a stall condition during these phases is extremely rare making the situation aboard Flight 431 all the more unusual and challenging. Let's take a closer look at the Airbus Flight Crew Operation Manual, or FCOM, which sets out the procedure for responding to a stall warning. According to the FCOM, the moment a stall warning is triggered, accompanied by the activation of the stick shaker, the flight crew should immediately and simultaneously apply full maximum engine thrust and reduce the aircraft's pitch attitude. This position should be maintained until the stick shaker stops, allowing the aircraft to gain speed while minimizing altitude loss. But here's where Flight 431's situation presents a conundrum. The onset of a stall warning during takeoff or climb phase is not only rare, but also counterintuitive to the flight crew's trained responses. The sudden full thrust and pitch reduction could have been disorienting, leading to a delayed or incorrect response. This, coupled with the fact that it was a false stall warning, could have led to a tragic chain of events. Furthermore, the stick shaker should have immediately stopped once the flight crew applied this procedure. But in the case of Flight 431, this did not happen. The continued stall warning, despite following the FCCOM procedure, might have added to the confusion in the cockpit. 
leading to a further escalation of the situation. While we may never know exactly what happened on board Flight 431, the lessons learned from this tragedy continue to shape aviation safety protocols today. It reminds us of the importance of continually evolving flight procedures and training to prepare flight crews for all possible scenarios, however rare they may be. It reinforces the critical role of accurate flight systems and the devastating consequences when they fail, and it underscores the relentless pursuit of safety in the complex world of aviation 